Dear Lord. Hopefully you guys can see that now. Mm -hmm. I don't know what's going on. There. Good Lord. Morning. You can see me now? I don't know what was going on. I got this weird, like, thing on Facebook on my phone, and it was playing another video at the same time. I, I have no idea. No idea if it isn't a technical issue or the lack that I can't put, press anything correctly live, then you know what? It's not sass. <sighs> Sorry about that. Now I can hear you. Good morning. I'm glad you guys can hear me. Yay. You know, it just, this just rounds out my weekend. I just need to tell you. <laughs> oh. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Sorry for the minor technical issues. Um, I don't know what was going on with Facebook, but we're going to jump right in because I am about seven minutes late to my own show, which honestly never happens. So, good morning, everyone. This is the Pet Sass for March 3rd, 2019. We are going to talk about all the things that you can plaster your pet's picture on or your client's picture on. And we're going to talk about how... You think outside the box, again, for different assorted things and all those fun and cool, interesting things that we're allowed to put our pets on. Because you know what? Pets are a huge market. I'm sorry. Us pet parents, we're absolutely crazy. Absolutely crazy. So what we're going to do is I'm going to clear this up a little bit. We're going to sit down and talk. I have lots to tell you. So this is the sass. Still need cool intro music that isn't going to get me trouble. I'm telling you. So while I'm standing here, I want you guys all to look. And if you guys haven't noticed, I tend to change my background um, that I stand in front of. And whoops, there's my finger. <laughs> this is a garden flag by Amy. Um, I just did some mosaic type. Was it Jackson Pollock or Picasso? I don't know who does that. But anyway, I did that. Obviously my sass sign. This is a waffle weave towel from Stan we're going to do today. There's a little bit of trick to that. And those are socks, um, as we know, our sock queen. Um, so I took some sock stuff, and I actually took her template, made it a little bit of my own, but I'm going to show you what you can do with hers and those little tiny socks and so much more. Do, 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 do. <sighs> All right. So... Your head's cutting off? Is it really? Oh, for Pete's sake. There. Is my head cut off now? <laughs> uh, it is one of those Sundays. I just have to tell you, um, I do apologize for a little bit of a cluster just for the mere fact that I came into this weekend with an absolute plan and... Yesterday, it completely went crazy. If you've ever had one of those, you know what you're going to do. You have a plan. It's rock awesome. And then all of a sudden, you get thrown a total curveball, and you're like, yeah. So I didn't go to bed until literally 5 o'clock this morning, and I was back up at 8 o'clock getting everything ready after I reworked everything. So I do apologize for all those who are looking for the pet designs. Um, yesterday did not go as planned, but you know what? I'm here. It's a new day, and we're going to talk about all of this. So, you have me in full force. I am so sorry. So sorry. All right, so I have this here. Billy is moderating um, the, the comments right now. Um, he is actually at his camper, so you know what? I'm, he's, he's moderating from a camper right now, which is really, really cool. So he will answer any questions for you um, as I show you different things. Um, and let's look at this potty started so like I said I did a flag from Amy I took a client's um one of our members I took her dog's picture and if you saw the video it's absolutely adorable um I believe he's a King Charles type Spaniard um anyway so I took him watercolored him out 
put them on here. This is a great way for you to show off your pets, okay, or even your clients' pets. Make it custom. You can just let them send you a picture, get into your corral or your Photoshop, clear out the design, and put them on a flag because you know what? Pet parents are crazy. They're absolutely crazy. Everybody always asks me what my shirt says. Here you go. And this is very true for today. It says, my dogs make me happy and humans make my head hurt. There you go. This will um, is listed in our shop. I made this large enough to where you can have it as a shirt. You can put it on a coffee mug. You know, scale it down. You can put it on just about everything. I even have this in cat. So, but I'm more of a dog person than I am a cat person. But this way we kind of played off of both of them. We have the socks that I did. So here's what I did with these socks, okay? Cool pet socks are just the end thing. When my daughter was headed to work this morning, she was like, oh, I really love those. But she likes no-show socks. So you can get these from Walmart. Um, these are in the ladies section. They actually come, they put two on one of these cardboard things. So you could cut out. It's a great template to cut out for these. Um, I just left the cardboard in, to be completely honest with you. So Margo has one of these templates. It's pink. It's got the hearts. I used her hearts. I just changed the color of the background just because it matched better with my corgi I have on here. I took her one template, the one side, and I was able to literally piece it just like this to do one side. And then the other side that she gives you, I flipped it over. So really, you get more bang for your buck when you do the smaller socks using her template. My suggestion is, is I made it too wide, the template. I should have shrunk it down to make this a little bit thinner for these socks because these are much smaller. Now, you do these the same way you do every sock, especially when you have the um, cardboard in there, you roll it over so that you don't have any seams. So, I mean, look at those cute no so shots. Aren't they cute? My daughter loves corgis. She wants a corgi very, very badly. So guess who is stealing said corgi socks? That would be my child. So this is what it comes with. It comes with this little insert. Sit there and make a bunch of them for yourself because these are a great throwaway. Or you can keep them, whichever is. Um, I just don't know if this would ever show on another pair of socks. So if that's the case, always use this to line up your hole. You know, you have that hole in the sock, especially if you're going to use these type. Use that as your hole to line it up, and then this way you don't have to worry about whether or not that little excess um, ink will ever get onto your other pair of socks that you do beyond that. Or you just go get cardstock. Um, cardstock's inexpensive, poster board's inexpensive, and you use that. That is what this is, is basically cardstock or poster board. Trim it out, cut it out, make yourself a bunch. Um, for those who've got vinyl cutters or crickets or silhouettes or whatever they are, you can just really... Scan this into your computer, make it what it is, and then just cut them out. I mean, super, super easy. Um, so that is an idea. Pet socks are a huge thing, especially if you could put custom. Now you're going to get into the whole, all right, where do you draw the line? I just scored two pet stores here in my local area where I'm going to be their exclusive vendor, which is an amazing thing when it comes to custom stuff and stuff they carry in the shop. So what you're going to do is... You offer a line that literally is, that comes with just generic dog pictures, cat pictures, bunnies, horses, whatever it may be, whatever that pet store is going to gear towards, you gear their stuff towards that as well. If they want something custom, you make them up an order form so that they can add in a custom request, the client emails them the picture or gives them the picture, and then they give that to you, and then you can make them a custom pair of socks. And it just doesn't matter. A lot of people just want what they call cash and carry. Basically, just like you do at any of your vendor shows, you are literally just pulling them off the shelf and selling them to your client. They really don't care. Put some cute, fun sayings on them, and they're amazing. So this is a great, very inexpensive idea. I mean, these socks aren't expensive at all. But you want to have things in your arsenal that literally fit every budget. Now, yes, would I sell these for like eight to ten dollars per pair of socks? Yes. As soon as I have to adjust, meaning I have to add somebody's picture into it, the price goes up because it's my time and my effort that has to go into it. So if you're gonna make something custom instead of generic, then yes. Add your little bit of cost. People understand if they're going to get custom, 
custom in the sense of adding their own pet's picture and whatnot, it's going to cost more. If they want your just generic one that you can pull off the shelf, then of course those are going to cost a little less. That's just how I do things. That doesn't make it right or wrong. <laughs> um, yes, I will also be listing the links um, above for the different products that I use from Hailbound and from Coney Island. Um, I have a bunch of their stuff, stuff that you don't think that would necessarily be for a pet and whatnot. And I will be listing where I got different designs and all that jazz. I'll be listing that after it because Billy's in this camper right now. And he's from his phone. So he didn't bring his iPad. I'm picking on him. Didn't bring his iPad or his laptop to be able to link Coney Island or whatnot. So thanks to you, I was buying his reviews. You're so welcome. All right. So our first think outside the box moment is pet mats. Well, what's a pet mat? Well, a pet mat is where you put your dog food. So you're going to see a common theme. Coney Island sells bar mats. Okay. I know it's a bar mat, but this is honest to God, probably the best idea is to use it for a pet mat. And there's twofold reasons behind it. One, it's smaller. So it's great for travel. And two, it has this rubber backing and the rubbing backing is huge, especially if your dog is a slobberer. It goes inside the fabric and I'll show it to you in just a second. So hold on. It goes into the little fabric, it absorbs it, but then it stops it from getting into like your hardwood floors and ruining your hardwood floors. So here is the rubber mat. Um, this is a whole theme that I'm doing for my dogs right now currently. So this is the rubber mat that you can get from Coney Island Transfer. Let me tell you, they are, I mean, you can roll these suckers up. Great if you're going on vacation. Billy, you know, when you're in the camper. Um, great for when you're going on vacation. Great for when you're just traveling in general. Maybe you're going on a road trip. This is a great road trip item. It's very durable. Like I said, it's got that rubber mat. And you know what? You can still do a full bleed. Or for those who have a Sawgrass 400, you just do two prints. Don't worry. The prints that I will be doing, there'll be some that I will make sure are small printer friendly and ones that are big printer friendly. This fits on a 16 by 20 heat press. I pressed this very, very easily today. So that was, you know, I mean, look at the colors though. I mean, the colors, I don't know if you guys can see them. The colors are really amazing. And yes, I did use the glitter effect on my stars because, you know, you got to be badass every now and then. Um, but it even shows it really well. I'm going to come over so you can get a really good look at it so there is the you see how the, i mean look at that even on fabric that faux glitter effect is amazing cool right all right so there's that so there's one thing outside the box moment remember you can put your pet stuff on absolutely everything because again pet parents are absolutely crazy all right so there's that Today, we're going to be using this guy just because it took him a little bit longer to load and I needed to get some stuff done. So, so far, are we good? Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. If you're also looking for a cute pet idea for a gift basket, put your, I have some mom mugs in my shop right now that you can actually insert and it has a pet theme um where you can insert your pet's picture into the paw shaped one there's a paw shaped one and the paw shaped one you could put five little or four little pictures plus the the bigger one of your pet super cute idea i posted that in my etsy page you can go to the lpb designs and more on etsy type it is all one word up in the search bar you'll get my shop there's other another pet mom one there it's a frame you could put your picture in um i do have the dad ones i don't think i loaded the dad ones yet but i will be loading dad ones so there's mom and dad great for mugs you could obviously put that on a shirt you could put on anything but it is scaled right now for the mugs because it's pretty much what you put them on um this like i said this design is made to be able to scale it down to fit on other substrates because it's just a really cool design um i really loved it when i was sitting there creating it um and the kitty one looks like it actually has fur so can these pet mats be washed? They absolutely can be washed. Here's the thing about a pet mat. Somebody, um, Debbie was asking, can you wash them? Absolutely. You can totally wash these. The only thing is, do not put them in the dryer. Okay? They're rubber. 
air dry them. Think of these as like your drying mat for, which is another think outside the box moment. Great drying mat for when you're doing dishes. Um, they have drying mats, but again, if you're going to be ordering these, these are a great versatile item. Again, Billy, great for the camper. Um, that'll be my next sass is all things camping, um, which Billy will love. But these are a great drying mat too, because it does have that fabric on it. So yes, you can wash it. Um, I've, I have washed these, I've spot washed them and I've thrown them on a light cycle in my wash machine because and you put it on cold water, let it wash, let it do its thing, let it then sit out. All right. Let it sit out. Don't put it in your, your dryer. There's my disclaimer. Don't put the rubber in your dryer. Let it air out and dry. Hope that answers the question. Uh, what about digital paper? Oh, they're asking about my glitter effects. I am the queen of the glitter effect, and everybody will tell you that. I don't even know if it's safe, even on my mug. Mm-hmm. Yep. It's apropos for today. Um, but the the mug also has the glitter effect. I'm constantly putting glitter effect on anything because I believe that life should sparkle. So good. I'm glad that helped you. Doo -doo 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 -doo. All right, so moving right along. Amy and Stan have some new products that are coming in and they're looking to see how you guys feel about them. So I have some samples here of stuff that they have coming in. I have some stuff from other vendors, um, but there's lots of different things that we're going to talk about. So let me talk about those think outside, not think outside, but some new product launching. Um, also a great idea is mouse pads too is a great travel one. I like the Coney ones just because they are much bigger, but if you have like a little tiny kitty cat, this is a great kitty cat mat as a mouse pad. Um, that was another think outside box moment because kitty cats are so tiny. Um, so Stan sent to me a pet shirt. So this particular pet shirt, you can actually do a full bleed on. There's different little things that I want to teach you about it, but he wants to know if this is something you want to want him to get. He can get them in various sizes. I believe this one is the small. Um, and here you go. So this is, again, you can see a theme going. Mm -hmm. So this is the small, made for definitely your smaller dogs. There is no stretch to this, so keep that in mind. If you're thinking about getting that over Fido's head, it is made for little tiny dogs. Okay, so here's the front. Here's the back. Um, I only had one, so I couldn't even... Sorry, something was moving. Um... I couldn't really press the way I run into you. I learned some different tricks that I would want to pass along to you. If this is something that we as Sublimation and More have decided that, yes, let's have Stan get these, or no, that's not a great idea. I love the fact that even small printers can actually print on this. I mean, it's like 11 by 8. Um, and you could do a full bleed. So this was the cutest idea. You know, you get shirts. I mean, people buy shirts that do this. Okay, they spend big money with shirts that actually do that. And you know what, when it's underneath, it really doesn't matter as much. You really want that top. You definitely want to do it like you do socks and you roll the edge. So there's lots of different things that I would teach about it if it is something that we want to do. Um, so give me a thumbs up if this is something that you guys want. We're gonna have Stan, he'll get in some more samples for me. Again, pressure, things learning. I only had one to do this. So don't critique right now because that wasn't the point of it. Yes, there are some spots, but again, when you only have one to show off, you got to just kind of deal with it. Um, so if this is something you want, give me hearts, give me thumbs. Let Stan and, and Jen know, because I know at least Jen's watching. I don't know if Stan's watching. So if this is something you totally want, if this is a total go item in your pet collection, by all means, show it up because I need to know about it. Yes. Awesome. Yay for pet shirts. I would love to see if he can get them made um, out of the more stretchy material. Him and I will have a conversation about that just because again, if you're trying to pull it over a dog or have it to where it has a little bit of a give around the collar, there's some things that I would like to tweak about it from my end. I'll see what he is able to offer. Um, sometimes he can't always offer what my brainchild idea comes up with. Um, keep that in mind. <laughs> um, so I don't know if he's finally listed it or whatnot, but I started making, and I will do a tutorial on making pet leashes and pet collars. I have started to, you guys all wanted to see, so I've started to, and this was all pieced together. Um, you can get webbing just about anywhere, 
but I know Stan was going to try to, he was, what he was trying to work on is how to sell it to you guys, whether you want to sell it by the piece, whether you want to sign it by the roll. And you have to understand when I got sent the roll, it was this big and there was a hundred yards on it. So he's just trying to figure out what's the best option for you guys as to how he wants to sell it to you so that it makes it affordable. Does he want to do just a five, 10, 20 yard rolls? Whatever you think that you guys might want, because then it kind of hits every price point. Let me show you something. And let's talk numbers, because we're all about numbers, right? So if he offers you guys a 10-yard roll, that will give you six six-foot leashes out of one 10-yard roll. Okay, so you think of it that way. This is a 10-yard roll. This is a 20. I mean... Hello, right? So if that's the case, you have to decide your needs and your wants and what you're able to do. I offer, are going to be offering four, five, and six foot leashes um, that are gonna look like this. They're gonna be two-sided. Yes, you have to piece them together. Yes, I made this design piece friendly um, so that anybody can piece it together. My suggestion is for if you're gonna work with webbing and you're gonna print on both sides, is you line up your paper all the way across, all the way down. Line it all the way up, okay? Tape it all together, let it sit. On the flip side, take your parchment paper, your butcher paper, and cut strips. And literally cut the strips so that it matches, so that if this shifts at all when you're moving it in your press, because it's going to, um, you're not gonna get any of the, see? Because I didn't, I put my parchment paper down and I just kept shimmying it across. That was a no-go, okay? Because I was going over that one spot that I didn't actually see the ink because I really made my, my template close. I wasn't seeing the ink. So I decided while I'm working, so much easier, pretty much make a sandwich and then filter it through so much easier to put a little bit of effort into it just so that you don't end up with those funky little lines like I did on the back. But let me tell you, it came out uber cute. Um, so this will be my six foot leash when we're done. So that's what Stan's been in the process. He's been wrestling with the idea of how he wants to be able to sell these to you guys. What's the best possible way? He's just got to filter through the process because again, if you can see what this looks like, this is a 20 yard roll right here. Can you imagine he's got 100 yard rolls that are huge? So he's got to do it best cost, best way to ship, whatnot. Which let me just interlude for two seconds. He now does shipping credits. Let's talk about his shipping credits for just two seconds. Totally gonna digress off the pet topic. He offers shipping credits. Here's the nice part about a shipping credit. So for me, I don't have to ever worry about shipping just or shipping credits. Do I pay shipping? Absolutely, I do. But I'm quick to the draw about going in as soon as I get that email and I'm literally paying my invoice so my stuff can get out. But with a shipping credit, let's say you're a full-time worker, okay? This is a hobby. You're, you're not looking at your email all the time. By purchasing a shipping credit, let's say you purchase $20 for a shipping credit, it allows Stan to go ahead and ship your item. Okay, because you've already paid for it. He's not waiting on you to get that email, to let it go to spam, to let it do whatever it needs to do. It pays for it so that he can get it out the door and so much quicker to you. Now, you're saying, well, what if my item only cost me $10? The beautiful part is, is you get reimbursed. Okay, you get reimbursed that extra money that you paid for. And you get reimbursed right as he's hitting send to ship out your stuff. Because he's like, okay, he's got real-time shipping rates because shipping rates change and vary depending on what you have. I did a video. My box was completely stuffed full of stuff. Okay. That causes a lot of weight. I mean, he could be like some vendors. I mean, I can tell you right now, I get stuff from Amazon in a box this big and it's for an item this big. I mean, yes, they have prime, but they've built it into the price of the item. Just for you guys to know, shipping is never free. I don't care who you are, what you do. It's built into the product price. Nature of the beast. So if you're kind of leery on the whole shipping credit idea, don't be. Just think of it as you're allowing him to say, hey, go ahead and ship my item because you know what? I'm so crazy busy that 
this is what I've got to do. So keep that in mind about the shipping credits. They are an amazing idea. I know it's a new concept and I know people are leery, but I have to tell you, unless you're sitting in front of your computer and, and, and worrying about emails and whatnot, this is the next best thing so you don't have to worry. Get your item out and then he's not having that argument with you. Well, I sent you an invoice and you go, well, I didn't get it. Well, you know what? Now you don't have to say that anymore. So that is the beautiful part about his new shipping credit program. There's my disclaimer, my little plug for the day of many I'm going to do probably. I think the 20 yard rolls would work best. I do agree there. I think they're a decent size. You're going to get six, at least six leashes and you're going to get, um, you know, here's just one of the, the, I, I got this from one of our major vendors. Um, this is great if you're not going to do any sewing. If you're a no sew kind of person, they do have these at the major vendors. Um, if you're going to be a sew version, then, you know, obviously, you know, stands are going to work out great for that. You just got to get all the hardware for it. We're working out the kinks for that. Um, but this is a great no sew option for those who don't sew. But you have to understand, this is probably, and you're thinking about what you're going to use it for, you're probably looking at... 25 inches of what you 25 to 30 inches i know um this is for the large one billy might be able to give me actual measurements because he's actually made them um and i don't have my book sitting in front of me i do apologize so this only allows for a little bit of a image here's the kicker and i'm going to tell you this right now the downside to having these put together is you can't let this hit the heat press. If you notice what I did, because it shifted in my heat press, and I'll show you what I did. I don't know if you can see that. It melted. I melted it right there. So here's what you're going to do. All right. I took my Nomax pad. All right. You need something nice and thick. Okay. I took my Nomax pad. And I literally taped it to, uh, hopefully you guys can see me. I'm so, so sorry. Okay. So I taped it down to my platen so that this doesn't keep flopping up. I taped it down. Okay. Because the little guys in particular that you can get, you want these to hang over the edge. Okay. So I'm going to show it to you. You want it to hang over the edge here and here because you don't want these to hit the heat. All right. They hit the heat, they melt, and they make a horrible mess. Not that I would know that. Um, so if you're going to use the no sew option, which I encourage because some people aren't sewers, that's fine. This shouldn't deter you to not be able to sell pet collars. Okay? So what you're going to do is you can either let it sit off the edge on the one side because this side has the metal piece. So it's going to, you know, you just don't want it to hit the heat. None of those plastic pieces. Put your protective paper, obviously, top and bottom so that it protects your platen. It protects whatever you're putting it on. Um, you definitely want a nice, thick, I mean, you're talking, and I mean thick. So, mm -hmm. this, when it's combined, is about, excuse me, is about three quarters of an inch thick. Um, so, you definitely want to do that when you're doing those. Um, that's definitely something. But, a gret, again, it's a great option for those who don't sew. If you're going to sew, then Stan's maybe 20-yard roll that hopefully we can get him to make um, would be better because you can get six pet leashes out of it, and you can get pet collars all out of that mix, and you can do them. His are, you're going to ask me, I know you are, his are an inch wide, okay? His collars are an inch wide. I am pretty sure if he looks into it, and these are a really good seller, once he gets it all on board and he figures it all out, um, get smaller, thinner ones for like cats and smaller dogs. Baby steps, baby steps. Pets is a whole new area for him. So we need to just give him a little time and a little patience because he has been in baby land for absolutely forever. Okay, so yes to the shirts. We've got that. Amy has samples coming in, not only in what I'm about to show you, but she even has some in color. And if you know Amy, she is very particular about her samples and what it is that she wants to offer and offer to you guys. So I got a sneak peek. She is going to be offering, hopefully, the retractable. So she liked the retractable um, 
le uh, leashes here. You sublimate on both sides, okay? This is the large, this is the small. I don't know what sizes she's gonna end up carrying, but I do know this. She did get some ones that are colorful, so it's not always black. So right, it's great for, you know, those who don't want a little color in their life or have a male dog, because the ones that she got were wicked cool. I think one had pets all over it. It was really wicked cool. You could still sublimate on both sides. I'm looking forward to seeing her other samples she's got coming in. So this will, these are coming down the pike for Hailbound. Um, so there's those that you can get. Also, remember, put your pet things on everything from chapstick holders to jewelry for the pet moms. I mean, there's lots of things that you can put your picture or your client's picture, like this is Amy's. All this jewelry comes from Amy's at Hailbound interchange it with different quirky pictures of your little pooch product review number 553 for the day because you know you're gonna want to put that pet pooch on a tote bag now amy i've done stands um tote bags um but now i have to do amy's <laughs> let me tell you the difference um slightly one is a linen one is more of a poly canvas tote i do like her large ones and here's why i like the large ones um, for me personally, um, I like them both. I'm not disagreeing. I think they both serve a purpose and they're great. They both sub well is hers have a very large gusset at the bottom. Um, and this is great if you want to use it as a shopping tote. I know that my sister-in-law who lives in California, they do not use shopping bags like traditional ones like we do here in New York, paper, plastic. No, they have to use reusable ones, um, in the state of California and other states. So this is about four and three quarter wide gusset. So that's great for putting your groceries in um, because it is a wider one. She is looking at getting an even wider one for me. I'm thinking about a six inch gusset. I can't even put my fingers that wide. Um, a gusset, so that is a great shopping bag um, because more and more grocery stores are switching over to the reusable shopping bags and you get credit for that. So there's that. Um, I know maybe not necessarily pet related, but you can always put your pet on it. Stan has his whole sequin line. Okay. In the sequin line, you can definitely put, these are his new sequin bags and I got to talk to you about them. So they turn so easy. Oh my God. It's obnoxious how easy these turn. And I'm just playing with them backwards, obviously. Um, so these turn, um, really well actually i just am being dumb apparently um so you you can put you know your pet on there you, you can put anything you want on it really put cute pet sayings um there's lots of different things that you can put on these sequins um i'm sitting here fighting with it and i shouldn't even be fighting with it but you do you want to make sure that when you do your bags you go up and down and make sure you get them to move and do what you need them to do these are a great um Mag, and let me tell you, they're nicely well lined. I like the lining and the fact that they come with a zipper pocket. That for me as a lady is completely a huge selling point. And anytime these drawstring type bags come with a, a zipper thing. So there you go. I'm a big girl. Um, and this looks really good. I would put my, I put paw prints all over it. Again, you're going to market to different people, different, you know, walks and talks of life. Not everything you look at has to be like, oh, I wouldn't put a pet thing on it. Pot holders and oven mitts and towels. I mean, you can make your pooches the big beach towels. They're great to put pictures on it, cute sayings, whatnot. We're going to press because I had never gotten his waffle weave. And I guess you have to literally press the living daylights out of it and have it be okay. So... Here is the waffle weave, and you press the living heck out of it, I guess, is the way you do it. So there's your waffle weave towel. Everybody goes, well, how do you get inside those little crevices? You squish it. You squish it good. Sorry, that's got to be a song. Um, so anyway, so you know what? The colors come right inside. I mean, here's one in particular I can show it to you. I mean, look, at that's right inside there. The colors took amazing in there. So I'm going to press that right now. And I'm going to press the one that has more black, like more of a solid black. Um, so 
let's do this. First things first, always, 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 always lint roll, right? We always lint roll around here. So I'm sorry you can't see me do this, but I does apologize. So I'm gonna lint roll because you can hear me. If you'd like to see me, lint roll there, see? Lint roll, really get it in there, push down, abuse the towel, it is okay. The towel likes the abuse, okay? So let's get the camera back up towards my heat press and towards me. I don't feel like moving the camera today. I do apologize for that. I have enough technical issues in my own world. <laughs> I don't need to always put your protective paper down. Okay, so I've lint rolled. I'm going to, there's a, put this on here. You can, I mean, you could try to do a full bleed. It does kind of go off the edge of your heat press. Um, so you'll never catch me doing a full bleed on a towel that size, just because, I don't know, I just wouldn't. <laughs> I think those towels are great for little sayings, but that's a me thing. Okay, so, and if you ask, when you're doing your towels and you're doing it in thirds, take the width of your towel and then flip it and, and divide it into threes and then size your image to that middle section. Um, everybody always asks, how do you know what the center of your towel is? Well, split your towel into threes because if you're gonna fold it this way and fold it this way, you want that middle section. So flip that into there, okay? So I have my image down. Um, I'm gonna add a little bit of tape, just a little. Okay, we're gonna press this down. Now I am literally going to squish. Why squish? You're gonna ask me that. Why are we squishing today, Nikki? Well, we're squishing because I want the ink to get into those little wells, okay? Definitely want them to get into the little wells. I'm gonna make sure I am down where I need to be. As you know, Big Papa is drives me crazy. Um, I just had my, there it is. Big Papa is, Big Papa's Big Papa. Okay, so he is locked and loaded. I have them all pushed in, okay. Bottom paper, check. Lint roll, check. Top paper, check. Pressure from hell, check. All right. Ooh. All right. I should have pre-pressed. That's probably the one thing I didn't do because I'm bold. And why not? It's a rebel kind of day. So yes, pre-press your fabric stuff. Um, you can do a quick pre-press on that. I didn't, bad Nikki. Um, sorry, it is what it is for the moment. Another idea while that's cooking away is you see the little canvas bags that you can get. There's ones from Stan, there's ones from Amy, whatever the case may be, these are great for dog treats for throwing them in your car. Okay, so this is a great dog treat item. Um, if you have a little comb or brush, carrying their pills, maybe your pet is one of those pets that, you know, they have to take medicine every single day. This is a great for travel for your pets. People take their pets on planes all the time. Um, but this is a great way for putting your medication, putting whatever you want. You can make them their own cosmetic bag just for your pet. So that's a great item. Hold, please. Hold, please. All right. Now, I'm going to be honest. This is the only second towel I've ever put in the waffle weave category. Okay. And it's perfect. Now everybody's going to say, but Nikki, it's squished. I'm going to show you what it looks like squished, and then I'll show you what you have to do. So, it is slightly squished, right? So what you got to do, though, is after it's squished, get your snap on. And then it's no longer squished. And because you know I'm all about transparency, I probably could have even cooked it just a little bit longer and it would have gotten into those wells a little bit even better. I'm okay with it, to be honest with you, because of the wells. But honestly, it's cute as heck. It's a waffle weave towel. You're never gonna get 100% on a waffle weave towel either, but because of all the different little nuances. So there you go. There is Waffle Weave 101. 
My Costco and Sam's does not carry butcher paper. You got yours off. Yes, you can get butcher paper off of Amazon. That's where I get, I'm getting mine. I'm also getting the holder for it. So, yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Um, hold on one second. Put him back up here just because it looked cute. All right. So we talked about dog shirts that you can do. Flags, obviously. Socks, we touched upon those. Ornaments. Ornaments are a great idea for doing pets, um, especially for memorials um, or just even some people like to have them, you know, when they're a puppy or when they're getting older in their stages, whatever, a new one every year. Like I said, pet parents are the craziest people on the face of this earth besides moms. You can do placemats. Um, Stan has placemats you can use um, for different things because the people want their pets all over the place. Now, pets doesn't have to be limited to a dog and a cat. It could be an iguana. It can be a bunny. It could be chickens. People use chickens as pets as well. Whatever your client is into, know that you can try to find designs that are in and that you can change in and out or even make your own. Um, that's a huge market. We talked about the bar mats. We talked about leashes. Talked about collars. Did you know that you can use a baby blanket? Which brings me to my next point. So, I have two schools of thought on this. So, one of Stan's baby blankets, which are the 30 by 40, all right, are great for pet blankets too. Because I know there's a ton of pets out there that curl up, I know mine do, curl up to these fuzzy soft blankets because they like fuzzy and soft too. But those 30 by 40 ones are ideal, ideal for pets and for your dogs or your cats. But let's say you're traveling and you're traveling on a plane or you're traveling, you know, especially for ones who are cat lovers and they have those little things or the dog lovers, Stan has, and it's the most underrated item, and I absolutely love it. You can use it as a baby lovey, or you can use it as a lovey for your pet. Full bleed, 11 by 18 mini blankets. You know what else these are good for? Dolly and me. So these feel and are exactly the same material as the 30 by 40s, except these little guys are 11 by 18, and these are great for travel for your pet they're great for travel for a baby because they just want a lovey um, i call them loveys because that's what they are they're a little lovey um great for dolls i mean these are so versatile so you can use them for dolls you can use them for pets you can use them for babies whatever your case may be but these are really cool they're only 11 by 18 they're inexpensive and they're just like the blankets aren't they cute so cute fleece yeah and cats love fleece they love to just snuggle and love on these. That's why I call them loveys. These are a lovey. So most underutilized thing probably at Coney Island in the blanket category are the mini ones. So these are very, very, very versatile. Go now, have your QVC moment, and head over to ConeyIslandTransfer.com and get your little lovey today because let me tell you, oh my gosh, they are adorable. Um, yeah, mm-hmm. You know what another cool idea is? He has cooling towels, which I just got for the first time. I have no idea to press them. But if you take a cooling towel and you put it in like a circle, that's great for a cat, especially on those really, really hot days. Kind of gets the heat off of them too. They're just a cooling towel for the animals too. They can just lay on it. That helps cool off your pet too on those really, really hot days, especially if you live in like Texas or, or Louisiana or wherever the heck you live. Here in New York, we don't get that hot. So they might not be a good thing for me, but they might be a good thing for you. Um, mine stole the Dollar Tree ones. Yeah, but you know what? Let me tell you. Oh, the, yes! Diana's got it. It says dog breeders would also use them to send home with adopted puppies. Oh, what a cute idea. Great think outside. Great think outside. So get these. Get these little guys. These are great little tiny things that you can use. Um, like I said, great for travel. Great, especially let's say your dog's going to the vet. 
it smells like them without bringing that big old blanket. And let's say they have to stay a night or doggy daycare. So let's say your dog's got to go to doggy daycare. This is their lovey to bring with them. It's their little comfort. It doesn't need to be their big blanket that they have at home, but they need their little lovey. It's the same material, smells just like them, smells like home. This is a great alternative. So there you go. Um, or the California desert, right? What was the paper she laid on top of the towels? Uh, butcher paper, Florida. It's butcher paper. <laughs> butcher paper. I use parchment paper. You can go get parchment paper from your grocery store. Um, as long as it has no wax, no nothing on it, you get just regular parchment paper. And that's what I use. That's a quick fix. Or you can buy your parchment paper at Costco's, Sam's, BJ's, any of those type of stores. You can also order it on Amazon. Just type in white butcher paper. And there you go. Um... And it can't have any coating. Keep that in mind. Yeah, take them to pet shows. They're great for giveaways if you're going to a pet show. Billy brought that up. If you're going to pet shows or um, adoption clinics, if you're doing adoption clinics, those little tiny lovies are great for like promo giveaways because they are small and you could put whatever the adoption clinic's name is on them. So that's a great promo item to hand out to people. Again, we were talking about promo list ideas. That would that I think that's under just the $2 mark. It's over the $1.50, but under the $2 mark. I'm pretty sure. I can't remember off the top of my head. I know somebody from Coney Island will correct me on that. Um, but they're just great for adoption clinics. Absolutely. Um, so keep that in mind because it gives them a little something too. Because our pets also can have anxiety. And it might lessen the anxiety of your pet if you give them a little lovey. Um, oh, ferrets. Ferrets is a good one. Donate to shelters. Megan, I am all for donation. And you will find that out. I am the donation queen. I donate to schools right now. For me, I'm doing firefighters and um, EMS this year. Um, so that is my calling for this year. Last year, it was all elementary schools. This year, it's for the fire and EMS. So I'm working on those. On the EMS side of things, this little lovey is great for a little kid who's gotten into an accident. You can have something fun on it, but sometimes they just want a little lovey to hold on to because they're nervous or they're scared. So this little lovey is great for a rig. Um, when you're in a EMS rig, just make sure that when you package these, you package them in a sealed container, you know, sealed packaging because you don't want anything to get on them, any contaminants or whatever. Um, allergens to call it something and you can fold them up and you can put some really cute things in here and this is a great alternative to a teddy bear um if you know a great like i said if a little kid's in a car accident and whatnot great idea so there's you know some other think outside the box moments for that little lovey i just got blurry of course i did because that's just the nature of my beast am i still blurring nope okay um let me make, make sure Billy's not yelling at me for something. Your windows are causing your camera to go in and out of focus. Okay. That's the problem. Sorry. I didn't mean to go in and out of focus. But you know what? This is the only angle I can come from. So if I go blurry, I do apologize. We're actually sunny here in New York right now, which is an odd fact. So if I'm going blurry, it's because of those windows behind me. That's why I shut the curtains. But this is the only place that I can really talk to you guys from and go to my heat press. So I do apologize um, if you can't see me 100%. You know what? You've seen this mug enough. You know what I look like. Just pretend I'm a mosaic today. Um, pillows. That is my next one. So then you can get into the pillows. So Stan has a wide variety of pillows and our pillow cases. So what I do for college kids is when they're going away to college, they want to take their little furry friend with them, but they can't. So what you do is what I do is I put a big picture on the front of the pillow case and then their name down the side of it on one side, flip it over and I get a collage of pictures. I put all over the back. You can stuff it with polyfill or you can, um, excuse me, you can do the, um, the, the inserts. I knew I'd come up with it eventually. So there's two different options that you can do there. You can even stuff those blankets with a, or pillows with a blanket. He sells the, I think it's like 50 by 60. You can fold those all up, stuff it into one of the pillowcases. So now back in the day, we called them quillos. And that was the pillow with a quilt inside it. Well, now you can do a 
a Stan one where it's a pillowcase, zipper closed, and you can put one of his fluffy soft blankets in there. And that's a great gift idea. And it keeps it tucked away too. So there's some things. But you can put the pets all over it. And this way they can take their little furry friend with them, so to speak. So pillowcases are a great idea. Slates. You can put stuff on slates, um, water bottles, anything you can think of that you can literally put a pet item on. Pet lovers are going to want them. License plates, license plate frames. You can hit up um, Todd and Marvin because they're in our sticker realm. And they can make some really cool decal stickers for your cars to sell. Remember, Todd posted a thing all about um, different vendor prices and whatnot for stickers for your car. Get with a local pet store or adoption agency um, for pets. Think outside the box. Remember, it's not just in your little tiny neighborhood of things think about um pet salons uh you got groomers you and we actually call them pet salons up here we have some um but you have pet salons you have groomers you have adoption agencies you have pet stores you have doggy daycares think of all the things that have to do pet wise you know what also hit up the dog park bring little fido with you and hit up the dog park make sure you have your business cards in hand but show off the stuff that you've made and they're gonna be like where did you get that oh that's a cute collar that's a cute leash then you could say oh i made it here you go i can make one for you too with your little fido on it remember you are selling yourself you are your biggest fan and you've got to own it and sell it no one else is going to sell it for you you have to sell it so just look at all the different places that you could have a pet item or if you're going to a dinner you can have a really cute bracelet and somebody go oh you got your doggy on there it always starts a great conversation so keep that in mind coffee isn't just coffee unless it has a pet on your mug right i just happen to have a fox today um bandanas so Amy is looking into bandanas. So here's my issue with bandanas. And this is just my personal issue. The bandanas that you can get for sublimation are like this long. No, really. They're like 28 inches long. I am not kidding you. They're like this long. Um, and why? Because they're meant to fit all sorts of dogs. The kicker is, and the newest trend that is coming out, are the dog bandanas that you slide onto the collar. So Amy is looking into getting some of those. She didn't like her first batch of them. Um, for me, I've made bandanas out of felt, and I'm using them as a, a grand a opening store, grand opening for a pet store. I'm making them out of felt. We're doing a bunch of ones that are just for giveaways because felt's really inexpensive. And I just use my template, made a bunch of them, and they're going to have them for collars. Um, you can get pliable felt or you can get the felt that, you know, is a little more stiff. It's really just up to you. But you know what? People aren't going to care. It's a free giveaway. And that was my promo item for the new store that's opening. We're going to put their logo on it so that everybody knows who, who they're their uh, pet sitting company is and all of that jazz. Very, very simple. I do like the collar ones better than the ones you have to tie around. Um, that's just a me thing. Um, and that's why I've never designed one for any of the pet bandanas because you have to do a couple different pressings, a couple different prints in order for it to fit on them because they're just so crazy large. Um, I want to say they're like 28 by 22 from point. It, they're obnoxious absolutely obnoxious and I just don't want to waste the ink trying to print a full bleed on those so that is my thought on that they do if you have a smaller dog but if you have a dog like my um, ex-husband and his wife they have a Newfoundland and they don't fit his head is bigger than my head his paws are bigger than my hands okay this Newfie's head is no lie this big and trying to put a napkin bandana around a newfie just will not work so my little newfie who when he stands stands taller than me would not be getting it um i'm a groomer and i make my own using poly fabric and pinking shears perfect i think that's a great idea um and you can totally do that the, the pinking shears she's talking about are the zigzag scissors um, and what they do is they add a zigzag. You can actually get different pinking shears with different edges, but that's the one she's talking about. Here's my, also my train of thought on that. When you're doing that and you're printing it out on your polyfabric or your felt, 
create an actual definite line that you can cut from and then cut on there. Don't just wing it. Don't just cut your fabric and then press it. Actually cut it after you've pressed it. Do the complete opposite. Um, and the only reason I say that is so that you can get a nice, straight, crisp line with your pinking shears. Um, get that cut first um, or after, whichever, but you really need to make sure. I don't want to be cutting my fabric beforehand. I press and then I cut it out and I sew. So remember, press, cut, sew. That's my motto. Um, so for a new fee, you need a tablecloth. Pretty much, pretty much you need a tablecloth or a tent. You know what the circus tents look like? Mm-hmm. Yep. Do, 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 do. They are huge. You can also attach it with a hook. Of, and that would be my doggy. Um, um, nice, please. My poor puppy. He just doesn't want to move. Hold on one second. I'll show you my puppy. You gonna come and see me? You wanna see? Come here, come here, you crazy puppy. Oh, you're crazy. I was gonna show you my loss also. He's a pain in the butt right now. He is wired for sound. For those who don't know, I adopted a blind dog from birth and he is completely blind and my loss opso is his seeing eye dog. Um, and that is an honest to God, true story. Uh, backstory is our dog, McGee, um, was out in the yard and he couldn't find his way back being a puppy and whatnot. And I looked at my little Lhasa and I said, go get your brother. He went, put his tail right in front of his brother, latched onto his tail and he guided him through the yard and they've been doing it ever since. So to think that I also have an adopted disabled dog. Now, what we're going to do now, sorry for my little segue, is Stan has these pet tags and I want to show you what they are. They're a polymer pet tag. I pressed a bunch of them last night so we can get time, tap, and pressure down completely down to a science, which I did. I'm going to bring them up to the camera. I'm going to show you what they look like. I played with the temperature and the time, and then we're going to press one live so you guys can see it. So here we go. So here's the heart one. I have all the templates for them. I'm sorry because of this. You know what? Let me see if I can turn it more towards. Here we go. So you have the heart one. And we have the traditional, here, can you see that? There you go. You have the traditional one, right? And I did a buffalo plaid. Sorry for the blurriness, just it's because I'm getting really close to the camera. This is your typical round. All right. And then he has the, so for those, let's see if I can get this in. There we go. Goodness gracious. Let me see if I can get it so that the camera, there we go. Move that damn camera. Okay. So I did it in both sides. It's hard to see because I'm getting way too close, way too fast. Am I? There you go. Okay. So I did both sides. <sighs> All right. So what you're going to want to do is 385 for 60. I think it was 65 seconds. Um, I did. Let me, nope. 385. Let me turn on my heat press. Hold on one second. I'll tell you. Oh, no, I, can't tell you. I think it was 385 for 40 seconds or, or 50 seconds. I'll double check later when he goes to post them. But these are a polymer. Let me tell you about, whoops, they're a polymer. All right. And the nice part about polymer, unlike the metal ones. Now, I'm going to tell you, these are a little bit smaller than these ones. Okay. But these are great for pets. And these are whatever okay but here's the, the, the difference Fido scratches this one it takes off that coating okay so if you've got a dog that's rough and tumble and whatnot I'm gonna tell you these are probably not the way to go because they are gonna look beat up and gross probably within a week okay true story whereas these guys being the polymer ones they don't scratch so Fido can definitely bring, you know, scratch these up. Um, I have a bunch of designs that I have for all of the different shapes that Stan has for the templates. 
Um, and in those templates, I have ones that are solid, ones where you can put a name, and ones that say, please call my mom, she's ugly crying, and you add a phone number. So you get those three different size templates for like, let's say this one, all in the bundle that you're gonna be able to get and download today. Um, so I have all the templates for those. Why? Because I had to make them. <laughs> the perks, right? You get to make them. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna press this one right now. You line it up, all right? There's nothing special you really needed to do that I found that you needed to do, except just line it up on your, your thing. Use your pro spray, use your whatever spray. Personally, I just use tape because you know, that's what I use. So, and you want to use heavy pressure, okay? Do not confuse this. Heavy pressure, all right? You're gonna press it and then I found now, Stan will tell you that you can, after you're done pressing the one side, to put something heavy on top of it. I quickly line it back up so I'm doing the back side and I'm pressing it again and then I do it. I don't want to be sitting there putting heavy pressure on these because the polymer is polymer. That's just the nature of polymer. I don't want you to get that twisted at all. There's nothing defective wrong with it. And for me, I don't care if there's a little tiny curve. I mean, here, I'll show you. I mean, it's got a little bit of curve, but that's because I haven't done the back yet. So when I do the back, it'll straighten itself out. Um, you don't see it as much in the rounds. You do in these, um, but, and you don't really see it as much on those either. So really, not a big deal in my world, all right? Um, no, I do not pre-press the polymer. Um, no, I don't lint roll my polymer either, all right? So, this is at 385 for 65 is what I have it on this heat press. Um, we did try it at 356 for 100 seconds. We found that mine looked a lot better at the time that I had picked. The colors just looked more vibrant. Um, you could do it for a longer dwell time, lower temp, if you so choose. But I'm sorry, time is money around here. And, um, oops, there we go. Time is money, and I just don't want to be sitting here for 100 years waiting for it to press. So 65 seconds is far better than the 100 seconds that it took. I am going to stop it. I think I want to say it last night. I have to heat, turn on that heat press because that's what I did it on, but I don't have it plugged in right at the moment. I could give you definite times and pressures when I do the listing up above. Um, so just keep that in mind. Um, I want to say it was like 3 to 5 40 seconds or 50 seconds to be completely honest with you. All right, so, by the way, they're hot. If nobody ever begins to tell you, these are a hot item when they come off the press, okay? So what I do, and I'll show it to you really quick, just because I can, holy Moses. Okay, there's a quick look. So you can see that I did it. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is literally go right back into it. All right, it pressed absolutely beautiful. Um, you definitely wanna do the 365 because I do notice a little tiny of a spot. So I had left it, I had stopped at 10 seconds. That 10 little seconds would have been prime for this. So you do wanna do 385 for 65, all right? That's definitely, as everybody knows, that's my go-to time and tip. Um, why? I don't know. I just found that that's what works for me. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Put this in here. Now what it's going to do is pretty much flatten it back down because it gave a little bit of a concave. Once it comes off of there, you put something heavy on top of it so that it flattens out. I have my nice metal table that everybody is always asking me about. This metal table, by the way, you find it, it's in the food service program. You can find them online. They're utility tables or they're islands, rolling islands. There's lots of different things that they call it. So you can use that. Um, so that is that. Yes, he has it um, at uh, 356. For 100 seconds, we noticed last night that I got better color at the 385 for 65. Um, and I can show you the two. Um, that, and you could see the difference. It's easier to see the difference in pictures than it is easier to see the pictures actually me showing them to you live, to be completely honest. Um, the 
paper you are using to put So the paper that you're talking about is special printer paper that you put your design on. You need to use special sublimation paper. Are you able to press um, dog bandanas at all? I have some clues. Um, will I press them? No. Yes, you could probably put a design in the peak, but they're so long, Nicole. They're like 28 inches long or some astronomical thing. Um, and I have to tell you, now that I've pressed it, it went flat again. But I'm going to take, just literally take my um it's heavy enough let it sit there let it cool down and it'll be perfectly fine um going back to the question nicole they are just really long yes you can press them i'm not going to deter you from that yes you can you're just going to do multiple pressings and multiple and you're going to be paper piecing um because that's just how it is they're like tw like i said they're like 22 inches wide or some strange anomaly and like 2800 feet long um so I, I mean, you're going to have to do pressing, piecing. I'm not going to deter you from that, but just know going in, you're going to be doing multiple pressings and piecings of paper. If you're not a paper piecing person, then that's not your thing. When you tape over the first side, second side, nope, doesn't come off at all. Absolutely not. And I've never had that happen, actually. Um, even when I do clipboards, um, when I do anything, I've never had that happen. How big is your table? My table is two and a half by four feet or two feet by four feet. Um, let's see. I'm just going through right now while this is setting and cooling. Morning, Khaki. Not a press quilter. Yeah, me neither, man. Me neither. Okay. So just so you guys can see it now, I'm going to move the press or my camera down so you can see both sides of it just because of the light issue. So side one, side two, and you can, right? Yeah, you're going to have the edge that's just normal. That's just kind of the funkiness of it. Um, they come with a, hold on, let me grab the bale that they come with. So they have this really cool thing that they come with and it's not your typical. So it's like a mini keychain with a mini keychain. It's the only, you know, those, these type of keychain things. Well, it comes with a mini one. Okay. So this goes on top of your um, item and then the other one goes on the collar. Okay. That's the nice part is because it's a double, it's a double key ring essentially. So that's the nice cool features. It's not going to pull apart. You know how you have those triangle ones, the triangle ones can pull apart. So this is uh heavy pressure, Susan. I knew you were going to ask. I knew it. You did not disappoint me, my kind friend. So there you go. You have that. So let me see what questions you have. Um, I can press something if you need me to, but I think that's pretty much it. Remember, when you're doing pre all your pet stuff, it's really what you're going to put it on and what you want to put your images on. I don't know why somebody's doing a mad face. I didn't do a mad face. I made cute things. Heavy pressure. Heavy pressure. Um, and I, like I said, I did 385 for 65 and they came out perfect. And I did a bunch of them, two sided ones and whatnot. Um, so I did that. Move that up just a touch. Um, do you plan on doing tutorials for license plate decals? No, not at the moment. Um, it, they're really easy. Um, I can show them to you. So here's the thing about license plates here versus license plates in the south. In the north, we are a two, um, I will talk to you about dog bowls, yes. We are a two plate state. Um, and so we can only use the frames for up here. 
we are not a we are not a one plate state in New York. So we're a two plate state. So my friends, I market this. This is a novelty type of thing. These are novelties that people hang up somewhere. They actually don't put them on their cars up here because we're just not allowed. Um, and that, there's a lot of states that are like that. Keep that in mind. Also make sure you take off your coatings off of these because there is coatings on these. Um, so there's that. Um, so, you know, we're a two plate state. Um, I'm going to give you the quick lowdown on these and this is why I didn't press them live because I'm not a fan and I'm gonna tell you why so you asked about pet bowls so the pet bowls you can get at the major distributors the problem with the pet bowl is you absolutely need to have the wrap that is made for it I use my little pink wrap that you know I've made for mugs which works out perfectly for a mug but for these pet bowls I have no idea why it wasn't working I taped the living heavens out of it like I normally do, I took my time, I wasn't talking to all of you, and I can show you what it did. Okay, so my color isn't the way I want it to be. This should be a little bit more vibrant red. My black, it faded up here. You really wanna get the specific wrap. The wraps are like 50 bucks, but if you're gonna do, if you plan on selling these as something that you're gonna add into your arsenal of things, you definitely wanna invest in the proper wrap for this. This is one of those things you don't want to work around it. Um, do what you need to do. I know there's tutorials out there, and I know Joe Poindexter made his own wrap that he, you know, he made for his mugs. I'm assuming you probably make it for that too, but I'm gonna just go and buy the specialty wrap that's made it because I have two pet stores that are gonna want them. All right. So just keep that part in mind when you're doing that. Um, that's my disclaimer on that. They are a heavy, heavy ceramic. But again, if you've got a dog that bullies their bowl, ceramic's probably not the way to go. Um, I'm going to see if there's something else we can do. See if Stan or Amy can get a pet bowl that we can do a metal insert into. That that would be so much easier. Um, I'm going to see what they have in their arsenal because I'm not exactly a fan of these heavy ceramic bowls and a dog. Um, because I know my dogs will pick up their bowls and walk with them. I don't want this and them picking them up and dropping the pieces. So there's my, that's why I didn't do it live, um, disclaimer on the ceramic bowls. I hope that helps. Mm -hmm. Of course, off top. Sorry, I'm reading right now. Has any new cards are purchased in the open card closers? Um, somebody's already answering that. I make those name plates. Yep. Yeah, I mean, there's lots of different things you can use. You can put your pets. I mean, again, this is a pet show. Um, so, you know, anything that you can put your pet's picture on, please, by all means, put your pet picture on it. Um, yeah, I think the nice, a nice stainless steel insert would work for a pet bowl. So I got to see and talk to Stan and Amy what we can get in our arsenal so that would make me a little bit happier and then you're only doing like a nameplate on a bowl and you're not trying to do that whole bowl in a convection oven and and going through that whole rigmarole so there's things that I've been thinking about as I was pressing these and getting very aggravated with it last night um I did the correct time and temp for it but because I didn't have the proper wrap and normally my wraps work fine um this just really bothered me so that's why I wasn't gonna I wasn't even going to discuss it, but there you go. There's my disclaimer. There's my thing. Um, sorry, not even looking at the right camera. My apologies. Um, so that's my, my reasoning behind it. Um, I hope you guys understand that. I don't want to show you something that I'm not impressed with because my face reads it, um, that I just don't like it. So, um, I do apologize. Um, what about the flags like the one behind you? What about the flag behind me? The flag behind me comes from Hailbound. And it is uh, 12 by 18 or 11 and a half by 18. Um, they press amazing. They're thick. Um, she is actually the least expensive in the flag category. And she is the thickest in the flag category. And I have literally bought flags from every vendor now. And I can tell you with 100% fact, I am a flag snob. And I pick quality. Okay, so there's something I'm telling you. I know you guys think, oh, you only push Stan and Amy. Well, you know what? That's because they like quality as much as I do. And there's a reason for that. Because they don't want to sell you crap. All right? I'm sorry. There's a vendor that has a really crappy flag and you can see through it. And I will never buy them again. And then I got a hold of Amy's and I'm like, 
now I can charge $13.99 or $15.99 for that flag because one, it's thicker, two, it's larger, and it's far better quality. So I now can justify selling it for that price. Whereas if you're selling one of these crappy ones, I can't justify sell selling them for more than eight bucks. You know, and, and honestly, I would use it as a car flag and let it be destroyed in five minutes. So there you go. So there's my disclaimer on that. Um, go with quality. Hers are the least expensive. You can get them in single and double-sided. I usually press a flag for about every show, so it sits behind me. Um, so, I mean, literally, that's quality, okay? And that image is a watercolor image, so don't think that it's all screwy. I did that intentionally. Um, so that is just an amazing looking flag. It takes the color absolutely well. Amy's done hers live as well. Um, so there's my, my disclaimer on that. Two-sided flags are great. Just put paper inside so it doesn't leak through. There you go. I don't actually do the two-sided flags ever. <laughs> just, I just don't. Um, let's see. Right. Amen. Those see-through ones cost you a fortune in the long run. And I, so just like everybody else, you do your research on what it's going to cost and what's the average cost of somebody. And if anybody who's like me, we get on Etsy and we do price comparison and we plug it in and say, okay, this is the item. And what is everybody else getting for it? And then they factor in the shipping and whatnot. What is the average cost across the nation of what people are getting for them? And then I look and see what it's costing me to make it. And then this way I can judge and say, okay, I'm okay with that price um, or I'm not okay. And I can tell you with the crappy flags, I was not okay charging $13.99 like everybody else was charging. They were ridiculous. Um, I will, like I said, I'll never get them again. Um, I want to give my clients quality because I want it to speak volumes of the person that is behind the madness. Okay. I want my clients to go, you know what? She gets quality. She gets an amazing product for the price. You get the most bang for your buck. And that's the type of thing that I want to stand behind and something that I want for my clients. So as I'm product testing and I'm doing things, I'm thinking, will this sell to my client? Okay. I know my area. I know my demographic. I know what they're looking for. And I know that it needs to be a good quality product that at an affordable price, it needs to hit all price points when I do that. So yes, I do a lot of research um, on Etsy in particular because it's a great open forum. People do Spotify as well, or Shopify, that's Spotify. Spotify's music, Shopify is shopping. Um, and that's how you can try to gauge um, what something costs. Then you look at your, your pricing, okay? And you look at the pricing and the fact of, okay, there's lots of different factors when you're factoring in pricing and it's completely up to you. And this will be a hot topic issue, so I'm not even going to dive into it. Um, but I will say that you have to do what makes you happy. At the end of the day, could you walk into a craft fair and say, yes, I'd buy that? Or yes, I'd walk into a store and say, yes, I'd buy that. If the answer is yes, you would be, you personally would be willing to spend the money on it, then it's probably going to be okay. If you're not willing to spend the money on it, nine times out of 10, and I'm going to get this as an argument, uh, tooth and nail, okay? And this is not meant to be an argument, but I know that my friends probably won't buy it, okay? Because I am, it's not that I'm frugal, but it's just the nature of the beast. You do what makes you happy when it comes to your price point and how you decide to market your product. I'm not going to judge you. I'm not here to judge you. None of us are. Okay, so you do what's best for you on that one. Um, so if you're looking for quality products, you definitely want to go with Stan and Amy. I know they don't have a ton in their arsenal. I mean, Stan has more stuff in his arsenal than Amy does, but because he's picky, he's picky about quality. And if he doesn't like something or if I don't like something that he has, um, I'm not shy about telling him. Okay, but like, no, nah, you know what? And here's why I don't like that. Um, I mean, if he were to ever go to a different bib vendor, I might actually have to have a hissy fit um, because his bibs are amazing. Um, his burp cloths are amazing. They come from the same vendor, so you know it's the same quality, and he gets the best possible price for us. Um, and so you keep and you know keep that, and he keeps that all in line. So know that if I'm pushing a product, it means because I'm standing behind it. If I don't like something, I won't talk about it. <laughs> so because my face reads everything. Um, Let's see. 
are there smaller pet bowls there are there are smaller pet bowls but like i said i'm not a fan of these pet bowls and now that stan's watching i really really want a pet bowl that we can put an insert in um and that's probably more towards an amy geared item because amy's more of the hard strub straights where stan is more of your soft lines so amy's more hard lines stan's more soft lines if that makes sense. So I'm going to try to see from Amy because she's the one that's getting into pet leashes and collars and all of that stuff. I'm going to see if I can't get a pet bowl that we can do an insert in. There has to be something out there because like I said, these ceramic bowls, I will not push. I won't be doing them. Um, if anything, because ceramic is just not pet friendly. Um, and if you've got a big dog and they're moving it around, they pick it up, they drop it. You can end up with ceramic pieces all over the place. I don't want that as a liability. I don't want that to be anything that comes down. Oh, you gave me that kind of a product. None of that. Um, another part is if you put too much pressure on a ceramic item, it can crack, leave little tiny cracks. If you put water or food in it over time, it could break. There's too many variables that I don't like about it, especially when it comes to food items. So that's just my disclaimer on that one. I'm going to try to see if we can't find something different. Um, so stay tuned for that. Um, Stan, they did say yes to the... Um, uh, the, the uh, pet shirts that we talked about earlier at the top of the show. We talked about pet shirts. He, they said that that is a go. So go ahead and order your little heart's desire um, on those. As he's saying, the bar mats. Um, the bar mats. Oh, do you have any of the bar mats? Yes, his bar mats are in stock. Did you not see them? I mean, mine came out amazing. So here's the bar mat. Like I said, this literally is great because you can literally squish the living daylights out of it and put it in your storage container. You can put it in your, on your, um, if you're traveling, put it in your bag. And this makes a great little item again. So let's think of a package idea, right? So here's your package idea. You get one of the totes, whether they're from Stan or Amy, pick your poison. Um, you get a bar mat. All right. You put in there this with a Ziploc baggie with their meds or their, their treats or whatever you put their little lovey because you know every dog needs a lovey now so you get their little lovey you put it all inside there and now it's like a care package for your puppy dog or your kitty cat or your ferret or whatever the case may be but this is great for travel it is very very durable it does absorb the water yes you could throw this in the wash machine yes um, to get it, you know, to clean, but you need to air dry it because this is a rubber backing. You need to air dry them. But yes, I have thrown it in the wash machine. Yes, I have washed them. Um, I don't do a huge cycle on them and I use cold water. I don't use hot water on them. Um, so it's cold water, mild detergent, throw them in, let them be washed, then air dry them. Um, I have done that and they've come out absolutely just fine. Um, do not put it in your dryer unless you value the losing your dryer and spending $450 for a new dryer. Um, because I can't guarantee that this won't be doing stupid things to your dryer. Um, so let's just not do that. Um, think outside the box moment. I know it is a bar mat, great for a pet mat, and great for a drying mat for when you're camping because it is so small. I say is small. It's a decent size. Um, it's a great travel size. So there you go. Um, great for college dorms even. Um, so... That's a great versatile item. Again, pet loveys. These are meant for babies. These are a baby lovey, but you could use them for pets, for puppies, for ferrets, any type of animal you have, especially if they're going to doggy daycare or you're going on vacation or they're going to the vet and just need something to comfort them and you don't want to bring that big baby blanket. This is a great alternative. You can also use it for dolls. Um, again, this is probably the most underutilized, but yet most versatile product because there's so many different avenues you can go down with it. His baby blankets are a great pet blanket um, to do for your pets, whether or not you do different designs, whether you do just their name. It really just runs the gamut as to what you can do for it. Um, pet lovers love their pets on just about anything. So you can put them on a phone stand, a mug, a mouse pad, clipboard. You can put them on ornaments. You can put them on photo frames. I mean, really, it's endless. Anything that you can have as a substrate, you can put your pet on. So... Don't think that, you know, nothing is too far-fetched. Ha, ha, ha. Sorry. Um, to put your pet item on. I can't believe I just did that pun. Oh, my word. Um, so there's, 
there's your moment. Um, I did your, I did the waffle weave towels. Like I said, with the waffle weave, you want to squish the heavens out of it when you're doing it. Heavy, heavy pressure. Definitely make sure you do your time, your temp, up the temp, I think a little bit, because I think my temp was probably just, and that's why I didn't get as rich of a black as I wanted to. I probably could have bumped it up to 400. Um, I know Stan has that information on his website with the waffle weave. Um, so just go by those instructions. Just know that you have to literally press the living hell out of it and then snap it when it's done. And those little pockets come right back up to life. They're not squished forever. Um, so just give it a good s couple snaps and you're back in business. So those waffle weaves, those are next go-to item for me. Um, I'm sorry, but nothing will ever, ever, ever take the place of his velour Terry ones ever in a million years. Um, but they are a great alternative, these waffle weave ones. Um, we talked about the pet tags, the pet tags and my Pros and cons about t pet tags. Yes, this might be a little bit smaller, but when you're putting on a dog, it doesn't need to be huge. When you're getting a standard dog tag type thing, these scratch really, really easy, and they will not look as good as new within a week because it's a dog, okay? Where this, they can scratch it, and it's not going to wear and tear. These are going to wear and tear far better, and the client's going to get more bang for their buck with these. Um, they're two-sided. I did it 385 for 65 heavy pressure um i pressed one side i quickly flipped it over press the other so that it would press flat and i'll show you that okay so there i'll even put them side by side because i did front and back on both of these so this is the one i press literally one inside the other this one i press and it has just a slightly a different arc not too bad really i mean there is a slight arc but when you go to press the back side of it it flattens right out um and it's no big deal. And the fact that these are a polymer, they're not going to break. Um, so, you know, that's the beautiful part of it. It comes with the two little tiny, like, keychain jump rings to call them something. So you can put them on the collars. I did talk about collars and the pros and cons of those collars. Yes, there's no sew options at any of the major vendors. But if you're into this whole sewing thing like I am, I'm going to be taking Stan's webbing. I'm going to do a total tutorial on how to make a complete pet collar and the pet leash so you can sell them as sets. And you can even make a pet key fob just for that owner as well. So there's lots of different things that I will be doing in a definite, just regular tutorial, not alive here on the SAS. Um, just because I already talked for two hours. We don't need to be doing the tutorial on sewing as well. So are we good? How are we doing? Are they, Meg, are they your, one of your best sellers? I like his. His are thick. Um, they don't have a polyester feel. You know how with like the, the different types of like microfiber towels, I don't like the feel of a microfiber towel, to be honest with you. But Stan's managed to get ones that don't have that really weird feel to me. And I've had a microfiber feeling waffle weave and it just, I have texture issues apparently. So I do like his. His are thick. His are really thick. They're not a thin towel, which is amazing. Um, so I do like them. Um, and I think it is a great alternative because a lot of people love that waffle weave look. Um, and it's a great, and now that we can just master the tea towel, we will be totally awesome in the trifecta. Um, because you'll have your, your fancy smancy towels, your waffle weaves and your tea towels. So that's, that's our next adventure. We need the trifecta, um, of the towel realm in, in Stan's world. So there you go. Um, thanks for the sass today. I'm a huge pet lover here in Pittsburgh. Have you pressed a plate yet? A plate as in a food plate, as in a license plate. Which kind of plate are we talking about? The bag you were showing with the wide bottom. How thick are those bags? They're thick. Um, somebody was asking about these bags. These are a nice, thick bag i mean they're definitely a nice thick bag um i and and if you've gotten her if you've gotten her um pot holders or her oven mitts it's made out of the same material or her um aprons same material just made in this um the gusset on the smaller ones obviously are half of this like i said that's a nice that's a nice decent gusset on that um so that's really cool. I mean, it's really just a cool item to be completely honest with you. Um, so there you go. I hope that helps. But I love the feel of them. They even have a soft feel to them. Um, so I do like these. I asked her, 
you know, I bought some so that I could see how big the wide the gusset is because they want to use them for shopping. And I said, can we get a bigger gusset at the bottom? She's like, sure. I think I can do that. Like, yay. Um, so I like those. If you like that type of material, the linen material, they are great linen product. Um, I got to tell you, Stan also has his totes. Um, he has his tote bags. His are just a different type of material and his are a great tote as well. Um, his are out of stock currently. They'll be in, he said four to six weeks. Um, so don't be going and looking on his website for them. Each tote has different needs or different uses. Um, so this is a Stan tote, believe it or not. Um, again, this is more like a canvas feel. Hers is more of a linen feel. Um, pros and cons, I like them both. And they have, like I said, they have different needs. And could I put a gusset in the bottom of this? Yep, I definitely could. I totally could show you how to put your own gusset in the one of Stan's bags and change the size of the gusset. Um, that's a total tutorial for a totally different day. But yes, there's a, you know, those are, those are the things that you have in there. Um, Again, pet jewelry, when it comes to Mother's Day, as we move towards Mother's Day, you can't forget the fur mommies. So we'll be talking that in the Mother's Day special. Um, but again, start marketing it now. I mean, you could start marketing anything at any time. I mean, I can start marketing Christmas if I want. Um, people are going to buy. That's just how it works. Um, new here, where can I order those bags? You can order them at hailbound.com. Um, the, they come in two different sizes, a small and a large. Um, let me tell you what size the gusset is on the small ones. Cause that'll help. Mm. Wouldn't be a show if I didn't hum. Okay. So on the smaller, so her smaller ones don't have that wide gusset at the bottom. Um, they have a little gusset at the bottom, okay? So this is the smaller one, and it has about a two inch. So you got four and a half on the big one, and you got a two inch on the smaller one. Um, so here's her large one, right? There's the large, here's the small. There you go, you can see them in size. All right, again, this is just a smaller gusset at the bottom. Like I said, we can take stands and put gussets at the bottom, and I bet you can even have them made with a gusset at the bottom because that's a huge selling feature on my in my realm. Um, but his are great for going to the beach. They're great for anything, really. Um, but, so, yeah, I mean, these just sit and kind of in love with the big bags, ain't gonna lie. So, there you go. I hope that helps. Oh, my God. You're going to have to watch your sharing tutorials. I can't sew a button. I'm going to teach you guys. Um, I'm going to have a whole sewing line and right down to what kind of um, sewing machine, inexpensive one you can buy. And pretty much everything that I will show you sewing is straight stitching. Straight stitching 101. Nothing fancy because you know what? I ain't got enough time for that. And neither do you. So we're not going to get into the fancy stitches. We're just going to get into the stitches. Okay. And how you can make pet collars and how you can change and manipulate things so it fits your need. Lots and lots of different options so you can still buy all the great things from Stan and Amy and still do what you got to do. I mean, I'm for the summer, <laughs> I'm taking one of his um, towels and I'm turning it into a bag and it'll be great for a bathing suit bag. Um, so... That's what I'm doing with one of his towels. I'm taking the 15 by 25 and making it into a little ba bathing suit type bag. And it'll have a, um, a Velcro closure. So that's my my thing. I took one of his pillowcases. Um, I don't know where it is. I would show it to you. I put straps on it and made it into a bag. Why? Because it's zippered closed. Um, so there's lots and lots of different options that you can use with that sewing machine. All straight stitching. And yes, I will even teach you how to put in a zipper. Um, <laughs> the flat bottom bag. Uh, yes, please. Can you do something with sub de with a sub decal? Um, I've done sub decals. I've I've pressed those live. I talked about it in the wedding show. Um, Mary Francis, if you go back to the wedding sass, I talked all about the sub decal. Um, I'm not exactly sure what you want me to tell you about it, but I did talk about those. Um, uh, it, they're it's, they're really easy. 
you press them, I think it's at 350 degrees for like three and a half minutes. Um, I print out my design and press it onto the sublet decal. You can contour cut it if you're good at that at your Cricut. Otherwise, you just hand cut it out. Um, they're really, really easy. And then you just peel off the backing and put it on your substrate that doesn't have, um, that's not made for sublimation. So again, they're super, super easy. Um, and I did talk about it in the wedding sass. Um, you have a sub. Could you sub on this webbing and use it for straps? Yes, I did. And that's what I did. I used the, the webbing and I used it as straps on a pillowcase. And I also put one of his sequin hearts on it as well. So that was in one of the sasses I did as well. Past one this past January. Um, so there we go. Are we good? Are we good? Any further questions? I know there's lots of different ideas. I would like to go load my pages of getting them up there on my site because I have, lot, I have a sale going on in my shop. I know that um, Ashley has stuff in her site. I know that Margo has stuff in hers. I know there's a couple of the other designers that are posting um, in our group. They also have some pet stuff in there. So think outside the box when you look at a design because you never know. It could be great for your pet. Um, so keep that in mind. Um, I would love to show you a tutorial on making designs, but I am still not a hundred percent. I am not even, you know, a year into learning Photoshop and Corel yet. So I still have a lot to learn myself. So I don't feel like I'm an authority to teach you just yet. I can teach you little things, not a lot. <laughs> so thank you. It's my Hobby Lobby hat. <laughs> anyway, so this has been the SAS for March 20 or March 3rd. Yep, it's 3rd, not 23rd. This is March 3rd. Um, for the upcoming SASs, um, I forget what I have coming up. I do know that I'm going to be at the ISS show in Atlantic City um, come March 21st, 22nd, 23rd. So expect me to go live then. Um, I will be with Stan. Can you imagine Stan and I in the same room? That should be a fun and interesting time. Um, so I'm going to the ISS show that um at the end of the month so that's why there is no sass for the 24th of march um because i plan on going live from the iss so you'll have to watch the rewind on that one um if you're not around and then i know i have a couple different sasses where we're talking about easter and mother's day and we're starting to gear up for that so i know that those are in the the works um i don't know if marvin's going live tomorrow um he might be and now that he's finally catching up and as everybody knows todd has been moving into his 8,000 square foot spot and he is finally, I think he has one more day, he said, and he is finally all moved in. He's been painting and sanding and doing all the things that you have to do. And we've been chronicling his journey on that. And then I have no idea what the boss has on Wednesday, whatever sparks her little heart's interest. So you have us all four days, um, most of us all four days. Until then, this has been the SAS for Sunday, March 3rd. I hope you guys have a wonderful and sassy day. See you next time.